Yeah, g'day. Um, I think, I think uh, we're supposed to have a yarn about how uh, important it was for us to work together and how we went about doing that. For me, that just, that all comes down to basic respect. It's just, that's what was shown, that's what was given. And uh, that's what we ran it off. Uh, respect for the person sitting next door and respect for the bloke down the road, the, the bloke sitting in the chair doing the um, whatever, you know, playing, the, playing the guitar or there was one bloke doing, what do they call that stuff? Um, Needlework. <laughs> yeah, respect for everyone. We all had, it was, um, we all got to share the land now. And uh, as, um, as it keeps getting clearer and clearer to me, the people who really do own the land are the ones who look after it. And um, that's a hard thing to say for me, coming from my Indigenous background. Um, I know a lot of people you know, could risk a spear in the leg for saying something like that, but it's the truth. So, as, I've, um, as I uh, learn more and more from this action against coal seam gas and destruction of our mother, the, the picture of the future is really, really getting clearer and clearer. And, uh, you know, um, proof of that is uh, when uh, Drew spoke earlier, I noticed he, um, from the first time I heard him speak, it was a lot more political, it was a lot more factual. But I noticed a little bit of spiritual coming in there, whether he knew it or not. <laughs> um, especially when talking about community. And that's what it is. That's where our, our understanding of spirituality in in a movement like this is that us putting our good intentions out there and being respectful goes into the earth's spirit. We are part of that. And it is something that is reciprocated. In a place that we look after and we care for, it's very easy to see the growth there, how green it is, how lush it is, how abundant the food source is. She looks after us because we look after her. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to say so many, so many people, they might come into this thinking either, oh, no, the bastards aren't getting my land. Or I'm not going to let them in my gate. And next thing you know. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> so yeah, um, the most important thing I, I, I figure is just to uh, keep growing that understanding. Just look at people. Don't don't look at the, the differences. Look at the similarities, and um, respect them for their differences. Everyone, everyone needs to breathe. People need to change. People should have the opportunity to do that, no matter what they've done. I personally, from, um, from my early days, know murderers, I know drug dealers, I know all these, all these sorts of people that people jump out of their skin when they realise that they're meeting face to face. And I've sat and I've talked with them. Most of the time, something's happened to them that they need to heal from and they've just never had the opportunity. And unfortunately, that, that opportunity is usually what jumps out of the way when they come. It's just uh, being looked at and being respected just for being a human being, not because they're a mean bugger or something. Yeah. Right, so the understanding, uh, we, we had a bit of a, a meeting the other day out at um, Hanging Rock Hall 
just uh, a few of the crew that were at Daffel Creek, those that could make it, and we just got together and shared a meal and yeah, just had a yarn. And uh, with the understanding of the the next the next front line coming, we put out an intention, and that was just basically pledging our allegiance to the Mother Earth and vowing to see the wisdom in the lessons that were coming. And just um, allowing ourselves to be led by spirit instead of, uh, you know, there's plenty of people in this, in this that are, have the political knowledge, the legal knowledge, the technical knowledge, but when it comes to being on the ground and in the bigger picture, it's that interpersonal connection and it's the understanding that we are all children of this earth. So building respect from that is very easy, especially with people like this. Um, so, well, my involvement in the whole thing was that at Doubtful Creek, uh, the property next door to mine was the one that had the gas well installed on it. Um, so from the start when we realised that, that Metgasco were interested in the area, uh, we did some research and uh, we'd also, we, we did the, uh, the community, the CSG free community thing where we go around, we did a survey of all the people in our area. We had several uh, meetings um, at the local hall there and we found through that process that we had a lot of support um, for what we intended to do and that was basically to get out there and show the government, show the local council, show everyone uh, that we could that we were opposed to what McGesco was going to do and we were opposed to having a gas field or the industrialisation of the farmland. One of the things I was worried about to begin with was uh, that people would be too late in um, standing up. I thought that they would need to have, to actually see the impacts before they would do anything about it. I was, I was worried that the trucks would need to come in, there would need to be lots of the issues that we know come with a gas field before the local people who are normally a very conservative people around where I come from, around Doubtful Creek, a lot of farmers, a lot of people that are not used to um, standing up against the government like that. But with uh, some information um, and some um, empowerment, uh, which was basically information, and getting people out to come and visit, uh, we, we s suddenly found that the local people, uh, like these guys, the farmers, were the mainstay behind the whole thing. Um, so we've got a lot of people in Lismore and in the areas who were, who'd come on board before, but the farmers, um, once they could see that they had a lot of support, and once they could see that there was something they could do, and that ranged from um, just bringing water to the blockade, bringing um, baked goods to the blockade. There was a lot of ladies that came out and provided food. Uh, the men came out and provided um, toilets and emptied things, took the water, brought the water. There was all sorts of things that we realised that all of the different people were able to do, which really empowered them. Um, and as well as the local people, people come from further away like Lismore, and that was really important for us to know that we had so much support and help because it's a lonely thing to have um, in our area, that they were, the, the properties are mostly two or three hundred acre properties, so just the one road, there wasn't that many households. Um, but when everyone came together, with the support of everyone else from Lismore and from all the surrounding areas, we were more of a, a force to be reckoned with. Um, Jambi's mob came out, the Githable, and it turned out that they were really the um, the heart behind the whole thing. They were like the state, the stability. Uh, they gave us direction, kept us focused. The whole blockade 
ran in a way that was much more controlled and uh, much more focused than it would have been without Jambi's mob there. So I think the main message that I got from there was to, uh, as, as Jambi was saying, is the diversity of everyone that comes together and we all just need to make sure that we understand people have got differences but we've all got one thing in common and that is to defend the earth, defend the mother and the farmers that were there were not only there to look after their own farms, they know that once this uh, industry gets into an area, it's not just their area that's under risk, it's the whole area. And I think that's how people from far away, from Lismore and other areas, came to help us because they knew that basically they were next if um, McGasco had got a beachhead in where we are. Uh, at Doubtful Creek and Round Casino there, we're sitting on huge gas reserves, but according to McGasco that is, but we're also sitting on reserves in the whole Northern Rivers. So when people come together to defend each other's area, McGasco and the government, uh, in the, who the government is really the ones that we're trying to demonstrate to show that we're all together on this because they're the ones in the end are going to be saying whether it, where it goes or it doesn't. And I think just standing up is really important and the ability to do it with so many different people is what allowed us to, um, to do it so well. I'd like to say I agree with uh, what uh, Jamie and Dean have said. Um, the thing I suppose took from it most was the way everything worked fairly seamlessly. Um, <laughs> completely, completely seamlessly. Um, when I turned up I didn't know anyone but within a few days the whole thing was working. There was um, water, there was toilets, um, people took on jobs. Um, and I guess and there, was, there didn't seem to be, to be any arguing or dissent. People were focused on the job they had to do and uh, pretty well stuck to it. Um, for instance, I had a big, or still have a, a big um, bamboo clump at home. We went back one day and cut a heap of it. Um, took it out there over a, f a few trips. Uh, someone volunteered a truck, we used that, and it was just used. No one sort of said, do this, do that. It just got used. So yeah, I, I was, well, not surprised, but um, pleased to see the way it worked seamlessly and the way everyone stood up and got up and just had a go. Uh, and then the lack of dissent, I don't think I argued with anyone, and I can be uh, a bit argumentative. Um, I got on with everyone there, hundreds and hundreds of people, and I'm still in contact with nearly everyone. Uh, not a lot more I can say to that. I'll just hand, hand you on to Don. This is looking, looking like he wants to go on the microphone. I live one valley across from Doubtful Creek. From the drill site, I can see some of my land. But I wasn't just fighting there for my farm. It would come there eventually. I was fighting for my country, for my people, and for the kids to come. At the blockade, it was a hell of a lot of fun. I highly recommend blockades because you meet so many good people. With <laughs> and people that you would have walked past in the street and never looked at even and talked to. But a blockade, they become your best friend in about two seconds. And that happened over and over again. We were there in pretty difficult conditions with some pretty ignorant looking guards around the place as well. But the mud was our biggest enemy. Six, 650 mils of rain, I had a look the other day. Was it? Over the time we were there. Oh yeah? And that all manifested itself in mud. Um, the, in particular, it was extremely important that Aboriginal people were there. They blended with the other people, the white people. They blended, the white people blended with them perfectly. They became as one, they all fought together, they all respected each other. Jumbi's word of respect is the most important word of the whole day, the way of life. And 
that's what was extended and that's what was received. And we all become good friends. That friendship between the two races will continue, I know. And we just, I don't know, we're stronger for having been there, much stronger for having been there. So at the next blockade, I certainly recommend that every single one of you be there. It'll be easy for each one of us if you are. And you'll have a lot of fun. OK, that's all I can think of to say. <laughs> Great. OK, look, we do have time for a few questions, uh, but not too many. I'll keep a fairly tight um, time line on it. Do we have any questions? What's the situation uh, there at Downfall Creek at the moment? Uh, are they fracking or, or what's the story? OK, so uh, the well that went in next door to my property at Downfall Creek was an exploration well, which basically they uh, drill a bore to go down to have a look at the makeup of the coal, um, do some tests, um, and then they close that well off. They fill it up with cement um, and rehabilitate it, take away the gravel. Uh, so that one is completely closed off. But they did find the results from that well showed them that there is a lot of gas, according to their results, under the ground in that area. The next location that they will be um, doing is, is uh, around about uh, 25k away at Bentley. Um, so again, that one's a little bit different. The next well is going to be a well that um, flares off the gas for a certain amount of time. It'll actually be a producing well uh, to give them an indication of how much gas, how much pressure the gas is under, how much is under the ground. Once they finish their exploration phase is when they come, and that one will probably be fracked, the one at Bentley. It's a slightly different type of gas. It's called tight gas. It's, in, it's not in the coal seams. It's, it's going to be about a two kilometre deep well where uh, the gas is actually trapped in sandstone. Um, they'll need to, to frack it, or if not it, they will be fracking the wells that they build around it in that area. So while we're still under exploration, Metgasco's indication are that they've got, they've found quite a bit of gas that they will be coming back for and going into production at some point. The problem is, is what they, uh, they uncover, what they bring up from the coal seam. The coal seam's full of BTEX chemicals and various other types of heavy metals and things. So it's not so much what they pump down there, which is a big issue as well, but I mean, it's when they release the water pressure from the coal seams that allows whatever it is to migrate. Um, and with the gas, they're hoping that the gas will go up the bore, uh, but usually whatever's down there is going to migrate to the path of least resistance. So any types of cracks or fissures or anything like that, um, that's where, and this could be um, into surrounding aquifers or into aquifers that the well has actually punctured through on the way down there. And they all tell us that um, the bores are completely safe and they surround them with cement and, and concrete or uh, uh, steel and things. But for example, the one at, um, at Casino Airport that they put down, that recently in July, uh, there was uh, a release of gas there. 200 metres of drill pipe was explosively shot up into the air. Is that a flare one? Yeah. Um, all the workers had to run away and the, the poles, the, the drill rods slammed down onto the machine and did a lot of damage. A couple of them landed out in the paddock uh, and the, the workers said when they turned around and looked back there was ignition of gas above the drill rig. And so that was during the decommissioning part and according to the government report on it, it was related to issues that they've had for the life of the well. Um, that well had been leaking um, for the whole time that it had been there and that manifested itself during the closing of the well into an explosion. So there's, that was one little bit of proof that we've got um, that these things aren't safe. Uh, so when it's in full production I think it's going to be a lot more deadly than what it is just now in, in uh, exploration. Thanks, Ben. Um, one last question from Lynn. 
I want to say how inspirational the Doubtful Creek blockade was to all of us. I managed a couple of days there, but not the time when the, the trucks were coming. The way it was carried out, the results, the publicity from it, must surely attract a lot of people who would normally not go to blockades to come to the next one at Bentley. I'm hoping we'll get a lot more farmers along. I think we'll contact a lot of the farmers locally to get them to come because I think having seen the wonderful things that happened in terms of behaviour, I think they'll be in it to support us. So congratulations, all of you who did it.